It was 2008, the era of Britney's comeback. And phones like this. You'll be surprised by some of the stuff you find on YouTube. London's movie theaters were getting ready for the premiere of the crime comedy Rock and Rolla. The rights to international distribution were bought by Warner Brothers. Four months prior, a private screening in the studio office had left Bruce Berman with a twinkle in his eye. The head of Village Roadshow Pictures, the company which usually shoots blockbusters for Warner Brothers, happened to be looking for a director for their new screen adaptation about the greatest detective on the planet. The British hooligan who had spent his whole career professing his love for London seemed like the perfect candidate for the post. The official offer was not long in coming, and before Rock and Rolla hit the screens, Guy Ritchie had signed a contract to film Sherlock Holmes. For the first time in his career, Ritchie did not write the screenplay for a picture which he was about to film. The script had been worked on by five authors already, not counting Sir Arthur Conan Doyle himself. The guy still got involved in the process, insisting that they leave out the typical cliches from the books. They cut the phrase, elementary, my dear Watson. And the famous hat worn by Sherlock. Richie envisioned Holmes as youthful and eccentric, which for a long time kept him from considering Robert Downey Jr. as an option, since he seemed too old for the role. Happily, Robert got his chance, and within the first five minutes of the audition, Guy realized that he had found his ideal candidate. I dare say we have the right man, gentlemen. Sherlock Holmes. But having changed the age of the main hero, the director was faced with a different problem. Rachel McAdams, who had already been confirmed for the part of Irene Adler, had been chosen when Sherlock was young in the script. But paired with Downey Jr., the actress seemed too young. Oh, dear. Once again, the future Holmes disturbed Richie's plan and insisted that Rachel was perfect and that no one would notice a dissonance in their relationship on the screen. Now, I need to work. Still, there was one candidate Guy was certain of from the moment he read the script. For him, Watson could only be Jude Law. Even here, Robert stuck his nose in and convinced the then uncertain Jude to agree to participate in the project. Jude agreed on one condition. His Watson would be more brutal than in the books. Watson, what have you done? Richie decided to look at it not as a condition, but as a new angle, and accented the character's military background and sharp wit. And yes, of course, there was one more person that the director was 100% confident in. Henry Blackwood was played by Mark Strong, who signed up for his third film in a row by Guy. It's only the beginning. However, there were a few hiccups in the casting process. Richie was a fan of the classic performance of Vasily Levinov as Holmes, invited him to participate in the picture, but unfortunately, Levinov declined. So the director had on his hands an acting ensemble of the highest order, one of the most coveted scripts in Hollywood, as well as a budget of 90 million. Keep your money. I didn't say I'll take the case. Well, consider it a wager that you will. This was twice the budget of both his previous films combined. He was given a carte blanche, and on the 3rd of October started filming the biggest project of his career. for this reimagination of, of Sherlock Holmes because he's an innovator and he's kind of reinventing himself as well. Of course, the main set decoration was London itself, ah, which Richie had been trying to portray from different angles over the last decade. The set designers found the perfect balance between using real locations and computer graphics. And their attention to detail, beginning with the streets and ending with the apartment on Baker Street, we sort of gathered all the smalls as we went along from like flea markets, antique shops, and hire companies. So it's a real sort of mass mix, really. Don't touch everything is in its proper place, as per usual. Won them an Oscar nomination for best production design a year and a half later. The very was working on. 
clearly succeeded. Cinematographer Philippe Rousselot combined all the types of lighting possible while preferring natural sources. The use of high-speed cameras allowed them to get slow-motion shots without additional post-production for most of the fight scenes. Dislocate your entirely. By the way, the three main actors did a large portion of their stunts without using stunt doubles. Downey Jr.'s skill was a pleasant discovery. He knew Wing Chun Kung Fu. Initially, I thought I'd come in and just show Guy how badass Sifu and I were and how much we were going to contribute to the choreography, which we did. Fought and jumped at every opportunity and even came close to getting seriously injured several times. Every hit you see him take is absolutely real, and the, the action they accomplished on that I thought was, was really quite extraordinary. During the fight scene with Dredger, the actor Robert Miley accidentally hit Downey Jr. on the head. Considering Miley's professional wrestling background and the fact that he was twice the size of his opponent, the punch was so hard that Richie stopped filming immediately and called an ambulance. Thankfully, it was only a bruise and a slight concussion. Another fight scene with Dredger was choreographed by the director himself. Guy used moves from the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu martial art, which allows you to conquer an opponent of superior size by using painful holds and choking. <laughs> Guy Ritchie had been practicing the art since 2000 and even earned a black belt. The picture is peppered with references which are also worth mentioning. Each time a crow appears on the screen, it foreshadows death. The murders and assassination attempt symbolize the four elements. The first murder is uncovered at a graveyard, earth. The second, drowning, water. The explosion, fire. And the attempt to poison the parliament through gas, air. Within seconds of its administration, the most powerful men in the world will be choking on death. There's also a reference to Sherlock's drug addiction. You do know what you're drinking is meant for eye surgery. At the time, cocaine was used as an anesthetic during eye operations. The mention of the five women killed by Lord Blackwood. The unholy murder of five innocent young women and the attempted murder of a sixth. Was definitely an allusion to the crimes of Jack the Ripper. Holmes, you must widen your gaze. I'm concerned you underestimate the gravity of coming events. Shooting lasted for 102 days and came to a close in mid-January of 2009. Post-production and editing took about another seven months. In that period, romance crept back into Guy's life. He was spotted several times in the company of model Jackie Ainsley. The reel premiered at the end of the year. Guy attended it with Jackie as an official couple. Sherlock Holmes became the first film in Richie's career, not rated R, and also the first screen adaptation dedicated to the greatest detective of our time in the past 20 years to set foot in America. Two months later, the film finished its victory lap around the world's movie theaters, having made over a half a billion dollars. Its financial success succeeded the studio's wildest expectations. In addition, the reel was showered with nominations and awards. Oscar nominees included production designer Sarah Greenwood, set designer Katie Spencer, and soundtrack composer Hans Zimmer, while Robert Downey Jr. won a Golden Globe for his role as Sherlock Holmes. Madam, I need you to remain calm, and trust me, I'm a professional. But beneath this pillow lies the key to my release. There's a Holmes quote by Conan Doyle, who was a genius, by the way, and he said, art in the blood is liable to take the strangest forms the success amazed Warner Studios, and they decided to ride the wave and start work immediately on a sequel. Guy had to give up his screen adaptation of the Lobo comics from the DC Universe, and Robert had to skip filming Cowboys and Aliens. Because of this hurry, obviously, Richie once again did not participate in writing the script, which was unique because it had a standalone story. Quelle surprise. The first installment was referenced but didn't affect the sequel. Warner Brothers did this in order to attract as many viewers as possible and to reel in those who had just found out about the movie. Is that what this is about? The preparation phase, storyboarding, and casting happened at top speed, which makes it all the more impressive how well Richie managed to fill out the acting ensemble. The phenomenal Stephen Fry was invited to play Mycroft, and he breathed new life into the role. Conflict in Europe at the moment. The whole situation could... Excuse me. Suddenly erupt. The same can be said for Jared Harris, 
Professor James Moriarty. His conditions for signing the contract was that the typical cliches be left out from previous films. It's tough to avoid the cliches, and the cliches, it's been copied so many times, and it's been parodied. Guy knew in that moment that they would work well together. The question is, what to do about it? Jared fit the role of Holmes' antagonist, as though the script was written for him. During the audition process, he took the place which was supposedly reserved for either Gary Oldman, Sean Penn, or Brad Pitt. Rumor has it that Pitt was the voice behind Dr. Moriarty in the first film in the theaters. But after Harris was confirmed, he re-recorded those lines for DVD and Blu-ray. That's precisely why I hired you. Also, Jared's candidacy was confirmed a mere 10 days before filming began. Doesn't realize until too late that it has swum into a trap. The choice of Numi Rapace for Madame Simsa Heron was an obvious one, and she seriously prepared for her audition. So I've been, you know, I, I learned this gypsy song, and I'm learning to dance, and we'll have this great dance scene in the camp, and I speak some, some Romani in the movie as well. Come with me. I need you alive. Now. After Numi appeared in the ensemble, Rachel McAdams realized that her character did not have a lot of screen time. Oh, I don't think it's my hands you have to worry about. Richie told the actress that Irene Adler's character would have a tragic finale, but didn't specify how early on it would occur. When Rachel found out, she wanted to drop out of the film. After the success of the first film, McAdams was hoping for a much larger role in the sequel. Guy convinced her to stay, thereby achieving the desired shocking effect in the sequel. By October of 2010, less than a year after the first part was released, they started filming Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows. This time, the geography of the film was more sweeping. Paris, the most sensible honeymoon destination of all. Elbron. Exactly where we must go. Via Switzerland. Yeah. Um, do you know, I'm not quite sure where we are. The production designers rose to the new challenge and did just as well as the first time. The visual aspect of the picture, whose budget had increased by a third in comparison to the previous film, was Guy's main priority. In order to create the slow motion scenes, he invited Gavin Free, made famous by the YouTube channel Slow Mo Guys. Richie's approach to visual tricks in the first movie is mesmerizing. While preserving the style, in the second, he perfected the tweak Sherlock's famous inner monologues. Additional seasoning required. Breakfast is served. He also allowed most of the cast complete freedom to improvise, which Robert and Jude made the most of with gusto. Here it comes. You are so predictable. Thus, our relationship. Relationship. The theme of chess was woven throughout the narrative. It is reflected in the set and in the plot. To consult on questions connected to the game, they hired an expert. My name's Adam Ralph. I'm a director of the English Chess Federation, and I'm a technical advisor on the film, specifically for the chess scenes. Guy often spoke of his love for chess, and five years after the release of Revolver, he brought that love to his movie once again. An important plot development doubled as a wonderful metaphor when Sherlock sacrificed his queen, foretelling the story's finale. Think you've just lost your most valuable piece. A winning strategy sometimes necessitates sacrifice. Surprisingly, the most difficult part of filming was during the gypsy camp scenes which, among other things, was a light reference to Snatch. What do you think we are, thieves? They're taking my luggage. Laugh them away, Watson. I have her bag. Je son sac. <laughs> Jude Law and Numi Rapace's dance took three days to shoot, despite it lasting only 15 seconds in the final edit. As for the question posed in the last scene of the picture, Guy has yet to answer it. It's widely known that a third film is in the works. Ready? But this time, Dexter Fletcher will take the director's chair. During the editing phase, Guy was in high spirits because he and Jackie were expecting a baby. Raphael was born on the 5th of September, 2011, after which Richie proposed to Ainsley. 
While the film was in post-production, the director managed to work with Jude Law and Robert Downey Jr. on a few small projects. He filmed Jude in the charming short for Dior. You know where I've been. I know where you've been. And Robert in the commercial for the game Call of Duty, Black Ops 2. Guess who brought a jet to a gunfight? A Game of Shadows premiered exactly two years after the release of the first part and slightly exceeded it in the box office profits, making the hurried pace of Warner Brothers worthwhile. Guy made over $12 million from the Dilogy, and though the reaction wasn't as ecstatic as to the first films in Ritchie's career, the adventures of Sherlock Holmes helped the director to reach new horizons and gave him a ticket into Hollywood's elite society. Hey, do you like our work? Let us know with your like and comment. Push that subscribe button and share with your friends. If you want to support the project financially, become our sponsor on Patreon or YouTube sponsorship. Thank you.